Rosa Belfort, senior fellow at the Europe Program at the German uh, Fund, joins me now, and we're going to need your help here on some of these numbers, because, uh, for one thing, our viewers, even those very interested in what happens in the European Union, probably are not familiar with this alphabet soup of acronyms. Yeah. So talk to us. Let's put up the, the, the graphic. Yeah. Talk to us about what the big takeaway is from these projections. Yeah. Well, first of all, the two uh, large parties that have dominated the European Parliament, that is the European People's Party, which is the centre-right, mm -hmm. and the uh, Socialists and Democrats, so the centre-left, mm -hmm. uh, they've both taken quite a big hit. Uh, that's the first, that's the first takeaway. The Greens are doing very well. The Liberals are also doing very well, but they're benefiting from the Macron fund phenomenon because mm -hmm. the European Parliament is, is considering that those um, elected in France will go in the ALDA group. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the uh, far right. The far right is also doing very well. Where do we see the far right on this graphic? The far right is ENF, the blue one, 57 um, seats, according to these projections. Um, Where does the Brexit party go? The Brexit party goes in the EFDD, um, so that's 56 seats yeah. as well. Um, so that is up again from 42 in uh, the previous parliament. So if so, you take those two together, Eurosceptic, if you take all the Eurosceptic... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. victories here. Yeah. Where does that take us out of okay. 751? That us, okay, that takes us to a stronger Eurosceptic group, two mm -hmm. groups at the moment. Um, there is some talk of regrouping. We'll see how that works. Um, but it's not going to upset the actual decision-making in the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. um, there still is a pro-European majority. Um, they could, because they're strengthened, they could be more... Um, successful in putting a spanner in the works of the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. So far, most of these far-right populist parties have actually performed rather poorly compared to their numbers. They haven't, uh, they haven't been very cohesive, they've voted it, they've splintered, they're very divided. Um, so it could, these results could embolden them to be more um, active right. inside the Parliament. But and cooperating as well, potentially. Exactly. And we've seen signs of this with uh, Salvini, uh, Le Pen, um, they've, they've promised to form a larger group, uh, teaming up with a number of far-right parties across Europe. And this is a good illustration of just how this is a continental election, but certainly as a reflection of the national particularities yes. of each country. Yes. Uh, so that it's more difficult for these, even Eurosceptic parties, to work to together. Coalesce. I yeah. mean, ultimately, given that, especially on the far-right, mm -hmm. They ultimately are nationalist. Yeah. That in itself uh, stifles any attempts to cooperate. Now they are committing to do this. Um, they're trying to overcome their differences. But when it comes to how much money the EU should spend on regional funds, mm -hmm. or when it comes to building walls to keep the migrants out, yeah. which is what these parties want to do, um, they will be prioritizing their national interests. So it's going to be difficult yeah. for them to cooperate with others if their national interests clash, right. which they do in most cases. But then oftentimes, as we saw with Hungary, for instance, and other countries, those initiatives are taken in contravention of EU directives yes. and rules. And really, the parliament, I imagine, in this, in the, in, the, in the case of things like building walls and fences, doesn't even enter into the equation. Or if it does, doesn't have the impact that it would like. In the parliament, no. Um, I mean, there are big question marks as to what's going to happen with uh, Fides, mm -hmm. uh, which is the the party in power in Hungary um, and whether it will stay in the European People's Party because now that party is actually more influential in the European People's Party. Uh, it has been suspended because of the rule of law problems in Hungary um, and we need to see it, it will depend very much on their results um, here and the results of the other far-right groups where um, that party will go. A couple more questions. The Greens did yeah. well. Why? Well, I think the first point, obviously, the climate crisis. There's been a lot of media attention. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people have been uh, very uh, m have been mobilised, um, also by the student marches, etc. Um, so that's that would be the first reason. Um, the second reason is Greens do tend to do quite well in the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. um, it's a kind of natural constituency for them, and I guess people feel it's safe to vote Green in the European Parliament. They might vote differently in national um, elections. And then, of course, yeah. every country has its own sure. um, situation. But I wonder, the establishment parties and those that have a majority, would it benefit them to ally themselves? Because I had the head of the Green Party here in the European Parliament a few hours ago. 
they, the, these Greens, as you said, they reach the younger people. They've got motivated campaigners. Yeah. Would it benefit them to form alliances, the establishment parties with the Greens? Well, I think um, the Greens can play kingmakers here. Mm -hmm. um, the, established, the establishment parties are all taking a hit. Um, in these elections, and I, what is what, we're, what is likely to happen in the next European Parliament that there will be movable coalitions depending on the issues. So the Greens are more likely to side with parties that are going to take on the environmentalist agenda seriously. Uh, so far, we've seen that uh, Timmermans, who is the candidate, the Spitzenkandidat for the social, um, Socialist and Democratic group, he's been courting the Greens and he's been pushing for a greener yeah. agenda. So on all those matters, that is a likely coalition. Uh, but on other matters, there might be other coalitions that will have a majority. So it's going to be more variable, but the yeah. Greens can definitely play their cards well and be very influential. All right. Rosa Balfour, thanks very much of the German Marshall Fund.